Welcome back to First Move. From meme stock mania to Robin Hood's crypto crash, retail traders are now a key player in the U.S. stock markets. But Europe hasn't seen the same size of pandemic boom. Stock exchange Euronext estimated that just 5 percent of trades were made by retail traders in 2021, compared to almost 25 percent in the United States. Well, now UK-based stock trading app Lightyear is aiming to change that. They say they offer easy, fast and free trading accounts to small investors. In July, it launched in 19 European countries. Here to explain is Martin Sock. He's the CEO of Lightyear. Martin, fantastic to have you with us. OK, I've seen you compared to Robin Hood in the United States. You can say why or why not, but just give us the vision. How do you think you can get more retail traders across Europe? I think like UK and US and European markets are quite different from each other. Like mm. US has seen quite a strong transition from um, like uh, banking based or to the online based to the kind of commission free trading and like retail uh, people have like really benefited from that. In, and now if you're coming into Europe, this hasn't happened. So most of the people are still making their investments through the bank. It's incredibly complicated. There's not the good access. There's a lot of barriers, a lot of hidden fees. So. This technically just hasn't been there yet. So yeah, we are here to change that. It comes down to how pension funds work as well, and they're very different in the United States too. So it's in, in many ways about educating people about the resources that are out there. Um, you offer an array of global stocks on the platform. And in terms of fees, you say it's free to the customer, but you only charge for, for currency conversion, and it's a flat rate. So just explain how that works. So. I think it comes down to the, how the Europe really works. So in Europe, you're in this weird position that most people have wrong currency. So if you think about how people are investing, then half of the money goes to the US and half of the money goes into the European markets. It means that people need to convert money constantly. So in Europe, it kind of makes sense to actually charge the conversion fee. So if you're looking into where the, uh, like how cheap it is to actually execute the trades and so on, so it makes sense to remove that fee and charge for the uh, ancillary service for FX. And on any transaction or on uh, over above a certain size? No, we're actually building it in a way that everybody who joins the platform gets uh, currently three different accounts. So they get a dollar account, euro account, pound account. So they can top up in any of these currencies and they can convert between these currencies. So now, for example, when I'm, uh, I'm currently in the UK, so I can top up in my pounds, convert that into dollars and buy US stocks and sell US stocks and keep my dollars. I don't need to convert back and forth constantly. So I think that's one of the core elements in Europe because like the currency conversion is so kind of prominent everywhere. They like, want to give the best possible opportunity for people to actually save money on that as well. It makes sense. If I'm investing purely in European stocks and I already own euros, though, does that mean I pay absolutely no fees at all? Yeah, we are like building a premium mm -hmm. model. It means that like if you want to get started, like uh, like just in a European uh, instruments, then fine, you can do that for free. Um, but we are also building a premium account. So for people who want to have a little bit better experience, like more data, more information, uh, or they want to have a, a kind of better under, understanding of the market, the risks, then this is you can use our product to actually get that better understanding. There's also kind of learning and lessons like how to get a better investor. Aha. And that's the key. So we are moving to a subscription model because I was like, otherwise, the economics of this simply don't work. Do you have any sense of what proportion of people that are using the platform will actually sign up for that subscription? And can you give us any sense of what it's going to cost just on a, on a monthly basis? Are we at that point yet? When's it coming? So it's coming out um, uh, end of this year. Uh, so okay. so far, we have been focusing on effectively building out our FX offering, and uh, this is actually working rather great. So I think people underestimate like how big is the volume what goes through the FX and how big is the opportunity there. My background is from Wise, and my co-founder we together worked in Wise, and we saw this opportunity to actually have a really low-cost solution there on a premium product. Um, it's going to be in a couple of coffees, uh, kind of cost-wise, in a one month. And uh, we effectively try to build a different kind of models for, for people who have a different needs. So maybe you're a more experienced person, you want to have more detailed view into your world. If you're a less experienced person, you maybe want to, don't want to understand all the kind of PE ratios. You just want to have recurring payments into some fund and that's it. I, I like that you're talking to me in the currency of coffees in terms of cost, <laughs> which, <laughs> which works in my mind. I can tell you, but I'd not show you my coffee because it's enormous and it's branded. Um, I guess a couple of the things with um, Robinhood that I would compare with is 
I think we've discussed the business model and what you're looking at. Can I just rule out using any form of payment for order flow, which is what got quite exciting during the GameStop period, where there was questions over platforms like Robinhood being given money by market makers in order to take all their trades and execute them. This is not something you use. That's correct, isn't it? So payment for order flow really doesn't make sense in Europe. So in Europe, yeah. it's uh, in mostly legal. Uh, there are like one or two countries who are like thinking it's a normal thing to do, uh, but it's like not the like, prominent way how to make money in Europe in any way. So in Europe, I think there's like multiple other ways. Like Europe differs from the business model wise and also like how the countries work and so on. So there's a lot of nuance around the business model. Uh, but yeah, like we see like uh, FX being actually one of the uh, really cool ways where European people can get the benefit of uh, investing in a kind of really, really low cost. What about crypto, Martin? So everybody's super excited about crypto. Um, what we see is that we started from instruments that are the most prominent people's portfolios and then going down to the uh, instruments that are less prominent. So what we see right now is that effectively large portion of people have crypto in their portfolio, but their assets and their management is tiny. So people are not big, making big bets there in Europe. So I think it's actually coming. Europe, again, lags behind the US. So at that point, we are coming with crypto as well. OK. And what about education, Martin? Because, interesting, on the show yesterday, we were talking about these meme stocks again. And momentum in a stock can be very different from the fundamental analysis. Where do you see your resp responsibility sort of begins and ends to educate people, not just about trading, but things like stop losses, for example, and perhaps reading a little bit about what they're investing, as well as just seeing something going up, perhaps, and buying it, or down and selling it? I think this problem is not solved in the world in anywhere at the moment. So mm -hmm. the education is, seems to be kind of the throwaway. Somebody has a blog post somewhere. It's like, this is how you should invest. And like, my argument is that nobody really reads that. So I, I think education has to come to, to be baked into the application itself. So you would understand your risk tolerance, the kind of um, market risk, the portfolio risk. And if you start like looking into it, like, hey, like if if you're distributing your uh, investments like rather widely and you have dollar cost averaging, an app could tell you that and help you to understand these kind of concepts what are actually rather healthy when you're doing your investment journey. So what we try to do is to try to bake as much of the data and education into the app as possible. So we have been starting for uh, building a kind of data product for people who are a little bit more experienced. So giving the uh, fundamentals data, we're giving uh, revenue data, uh, cash flow data, also analysis ratings and news and and like all these kind of increments, like where people could make better decisions. Hmm. Come back and talk to us, please. I want to track your progress on this. It's going to be fascinating to see. Martin Sock, CEO of Lightyear. Thank you so much for that. Oh, and I was going to make a joke about how many light years and why you chose the name Lightyear, but we'll save that for the next conversation. There are a lot of <laughs> light years out there and they're not all trading apps. We'll reconvene, Martin. Thank you. I'm being told off. It happens a lot. Thank you.